and welcome back to another new video of pen paper physics this time i am here back again with another new video on refraction of light because there are some details left last time that we need to discuss about it and specifically we will learn about refractive index but those who are new here and watching this video for the first time positively see the first video and then come back here the link is given in the description box below but before we go into the video please subscribe to my channel and positively press the bell icon so you get the notification whenever i upload a video so let's move into the video the first thing that we are going to learn through this video is how light travels from one medium to another without a deviation when light travels from one medium to another of different optical density definitely its path changes due to the change in speed of light this thing we have learned in the previous video when angle of incidence decreases in one medium the angle of refraction also decreases as you can see over here so finally when light is incident normally it refracts also normally without any deviation in the second medium but everyone those who are watching this video keep it in mind that light is incident normally or perpendicularly but that doesn't mean the angle of incidence is 90 degree that means the angle of incidence is zero and since the refracted ray is also traveling through the normal the angle of refraction is also zero here in this picture i have given a light demonstration on this particular phenomena when light is incident on the glass slab normally or perpendicularly it doesn't deviate there is another possibility of light to travel from one medium to another without any deviation that is only possible when the speed of light doesn't change when it travels from one medium to another that means we can assume that both mediums have same optical density next what we are going to learn over here is about the laws of refraction and refractive index the first law of refraction states that the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal drawn at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane you can see the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal all are lying in the same plane which is colored with green this plane is also called plane of incidence or plane of refraction as both of them are the same plane only but before we move for second law we will first learn about a concept of sine of an angle this part is specifically for students who are in middle school because they do not have a concept of sine of an angle the senior students can skip this part and move forward in the video sine of an angle is basically the ratio of perpendicular and the hypotenuse with respect to that angle in a right angle triangle when we try to find the sine of an angle we must have a right angle triangle and the angle whose sine value we are trying to find it must be an acute angle for example over here i have taken a right angle triangle abc and the right angle is formed at angle b so there are two acute angles over here in this triangle angle a and angle c first i'll try to find the sine of angle c with respect to angle c the perpendicular is ab and hypotenuse is ac so sine of angle c is ab by ac next we can find the sine of angle a for angle a the perpendicular is bc and hypotenuse is ac so sine of angle a or sine a is bc by 
AC. Let us now move to the second law of refraction. The second law of refraction is saying for any given pair of mediums, the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is a constant. This constant is represented with a symbol called mu as shown over here. This constant is known as refractive index but there is a way to represent it. As shown over here the light ray is traveling from medium 1 to medium 2 so this constant mu is called as the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1. So when light travels from medium 1 to medium 2, we find the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1. For example, over here light is traveling from air to glass. So we will call it as diffractive index of glass with respect to air when we will find sin i by sin i. For the next picture on the right side, the light is traveling from glass to air. So the refractive index that we are going to get from here is the refractive index of air with respect to glass. So it's always the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1. The value of refractive index of glass with respect to air is 1.5. So from here we can say that sin i by sin r is equal to 1.5. But now we will prove this that sin i by sin r when light travels from air to glass that means the refractive index of glass is 1.5. First let us take a glass slab and place it on our A4 sheet and trace the outline of it. Now using a protractor, draw the normal on the point of incidence. Over here, I am taking the angle of incidence as 30 degree. Don't forget to give the arrow and mark the angle of incidence. Next, I will take two optical pins and place them vertically on incident ray. But when you place this optical pins, make sure there is at least 5 cm gap between them. Next, place a glass slab in the marked position. That means you have already traced the outline, so place the glass slab in the outline properly and observe through the opposite surface because from that opposite space only the emergent ray is going to refract again in the air medium. Now observe the pins through the opposite surface carefully. Place your eye in such a position that the image of one pin will overlap the image of other pin as shown over here. Now place another pin on the opposite side of the slab in such a way that it will overlap the image of both pins as observed from the opposite face. Now similarly place another pin which will overlap the third pin and also the images of the other two pins shown from the opposite side. As a whole, when you will observe through the base of the fourth pin, you will be able to see only the fourth pin. The fourth pin will overlap the third pin and the images of first two pins on the incident ray. Now this is the final outcome that we get from here. Now we will take out the pins and mark their position on the opposite side of the slab. Now we will join these two pin positions and extend it till the glass slab and we will join the two points on the two surfaces of the glass slab.
Next we will take the protractor and place it on the point of emergence and we will draw the normal and also we will verify whether the angle of incidence and angle of emergence are same or not. You can also measure the angle of refraction through the glass slab if you want. Next we will take the point O as a center and we will draw a circle by choosing any arbitrary radius but make sure that the circle intersect both the incident and refracted ray through the glass slab. Next, from the point of intersection on both rays, incident and refracted, we will draw a normal Let us name these two perpendiculars as BD and AC and definitely we need to measure them. The length of BD I am getting over here is 2.0 cm and length of AC I am getting over here as 1.3 cm. Now over here in this picture we have two perpendicular triangles. The triangle DBO is in air medium which is medium 1 and triangle OCA is in glass medium which is medium 2. So how to find the sine of angle of incidence that is sin i. Basically we will take the ratio of perpendicular BD and hypotenuse OB as shown over here. For triangle OCA to find sine of angle of refraction basically sine R we will take the ratio of perpendicular AC and hypotenuse OA. So the refractive index of glass with respect to air will be sine I by sine R. That means it is the ratio of BD by OB and AC by OA. Now we can cancel out OB and OA since OB and OA are the radius of same circles and they are equal in length. So the final value for refractive index we are getting as BD by AC. Now the length of BD and AC was 2.0 cm and 1.3 cm. So the refractive index of glass with respect to air is the ratio of 2.0 cm and 1.3 cm which gives us the value of 1.5. Moving ahead we will find the refractive index but using the speed of light in different mediums. If we take the ratio of speed of light in medium 1 to the speed of light in medium 2 that will also give us the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1. Here in this example the light is again traveling from air to glass medium. So the refractive index can be found by taking the ratio of speed of light in air to the speed of light in glass. This will give us the refractive index of glass with respect to air. So always remember we are finding the refractive index of medium 2. But for that we will take speed of light in medium 1 first and then in the denominator we will take the speed of light in medium 2. Now here I have given you some examples of refractive indexes. Like for example over here 
it's written the refractive index of pure water is 1.33. That means it is the refractive index of pure water with respect to air or vacuum. Next, the refractive index of glass is given as 1.52. That means it is the refractive index of glass with respect to air or vacuum. The refractive index of diamond is given as 2.42. That means it is the refractive index of diamond with respect to air or vacuum. Now, why am I saying air or vacuum? Because as you can see in the chart, the value of refractive indexes for air and vacuum is almost same. That means the speed of light in air and vacuum is almost same, which is approximately taken by us as 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So, if you choose any one of them as your medium one, it doesn't going to alter the result for the other one. From here, now we are going to the next concept of absolute refractive index. Absolute refractive index means it is a refractive index of any medium for which the medium one is always air or vacuum. So, if you take air or vacuum as medium one, then the refractive index that you are going to get is actually the absolute refractive index of medium 2. Another point to be noted over here is the speed of light is fastest in air or vacuum. So the absolute refractive index for any medium will be greater than 1. For example, you can see in the list given at the right side, the refractive indexes of all the mediums are greater than 1. So how to relate between refractive index and absolute refractive index? Let me give you two examples where light is traveling from air to glass and light is also traveling from air to water. So the refractive index of glass with respect to air will be speed of light in air divided by speed of light in glass and for water, the refractive index of water with respect to air is speed of light in air divided by speed of light in water. In this both cases, we are actually finding the absolute refractive indexes because in both cases, the first medium is air. Now, what if light is traveling from water to glass? So, the refractive index of glass with respect to water will be speed of light in water divided by speed of light in glass which can be further altered as a multiplication of two ratios. The first ratio is speed of light in air to the speed of light in glass and the second ratio is speed of light in water to the speed of light in air. This alteration is not going to change any values in the refractive indexes as the speed of light in air can be cancelled out from both the ratios which will give the same value from where we have started. Now I have just altered the second ratio as shown over here. Now from here if you observe it minutely you will find that the first ratio is actually the absolute refractive index of glass and in the denominator of the second ratio it is actually representing the absolute refractive index of water. So finally from here we can say that the refractive index of glass with respect to water is the ratio of the absolute refractive index of glass to the absolute refractive index of water. Next what if the light travels from glass to water? So over here we are finding the refractive index of water with respect to glass. So it will be the ratio of the speed of light in glass to the speed of light in water. Next we will also alter this ratio as we have altered in the previous case. We will take it as a product of two ratios. First, it is the ratio of speed of light in air to the speed of light in water and the second ratio is speed of light 
in glass to the speed of light in air similarly over here also this alteration is not going to change the final value as from both the ratios we can alter the speed of light in air and it will give the same value from where we have started next i have altered the second ratio as shown over here now if you minutely observe in this case also you will find the first ratio is actually representing the refractive index of water and the denominator of second ratio is representing the refractive index of glass with respect to air that means the refractive index of water with respect to glass is actually the ratio of the absolute refractive index of water to the absolute refractive index of glass so from here we can say that the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 is actually the ratio of their individual refractive indexes with respect to air or it is the ratio of their individual absolute refractive index let us now compare the two cases that we have learned right now when light is traveling from water to glass and light is traveling from glass to water in first case we found the refractive index of glass with respect to water is the ratio of refractive index of glass to the refractive index of water similarly in the second case the refractive index of water with respect to glass is actually the ratio of refractive index of water to the refractive index of glass from here we can say that the refractive index of glass with respect to water is actually the reciprocal of refractive index of water with respect to glass or the refractive index of water with respect to glass is the reciprocal of refractive index of glass with respect to water if light is traveling from medium 1 to medium 2 in that case the refractive index of medium 2 will be exactly reciprocal of the case where light is traveling from medium 2 to medium 1 and we are finding the refractive index of medium 1 in that case so for example if light is traveling from air to glass and the refractive index of glass with respect to air is 1.5 then if the light is traveling from glass to air the refractive index of air with respect to glass will be 1 by 1.5 oh that's it for the day hopefully you all have understood what i try to teach you and those who haven't yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe right now and if you like the video positively hit the like button and share among your friends so that they can also have their concepts clear the link of my official facebook page and instagram page is given in the description box do follow that for any new updates or to contact me for any kind of suggestion or any kind of help till then thank you for watching my video hope to see you in the next video bye bye